Have you ever been wrong about something and you don't realize that you're wrong, right? Sometimes you're wrong, but you don't want to admit that you're wrong, but you generally are wrong. You have no idea. Now imagine being wrong about something for years. And that's basically my story. You know, what led to me uh, walking away from the Democrat Party. I was wrong about a lot of things. Not willfully wrong, not purposely trying to be ignorant or be one-sided, but I was wrong about a lot of things. Um, but we'll start back from me getting into politics. I got into politics in my mid-20s. I got interested in it. I had an ex-girlfriend who was interested in politics as well. And I didn't know anything about it, didn't know where to start. So I asked her, you know, to kind of give me an introduction to, before getting started, you know, kind of following what exactly is going on. And uh, she was black. She is black, I should say. And her introduction for me politically was Democrats are for black people and Republicans are racist. And so that makes it an easy choice when you're completely new to politics. And I, I kind of basically ran with that for a good while. And what also kind of helped to constantly frame that, that sentiment about both parties was the media I was consuming. Um, I thought I was being informed, but in many ways I was being misinformed. Uh, I wasn't really good when it came to reading media, reading articles, uh, reading between the lines, um, understanding nuance when it came to certain things, or at least being aware of propaganda um, to the extent that I thought propaganda was what those other people do, right? I consume the mainstream media, which is telling me the truth. Um, and that was wrong. Uh, the truth is that all media lies. That's ultimately what I came to find out. All media lies. Some lie more than others. Everybody has their biases. But, um, but that's what I ran with for a long time. And if we were to fast forward to 2016, Trump was elected. Um, I was kind of shocked, but I wasn't one of those people that was crying. <laughs> I thought that was silly, um, but I was kind of shocked. I assumed that Hillary would win and she'd be our first female president, um, but that didn't happen. And it wasn't that I was necessarily for Hillary per se. I just didn't, I wasn't really feeling Trump. Um, and on top of that, I had a healthy consumption of mainstream media propaganda. Um, and much of it is propaganda. Some of it's truthful, but much of it is propaganda, especially surrounding Trump. Um, so I want to say that after he was elect elected, I watched even more news then than maybe previously. I watched a lot off and on, but I watched even more news because um, political news became entertainment in many ways, not in the way that it was before. Before it was just kind of like this thing that um, older boring people get into, um, so to speak. But now it was like everybody wants to talk politics because Trump is the president, right? Um, and Trump meant many things for different people. Um, so he was either the boogeyman for some, a sign of hope for others. It's just very weird, <laughs> a very weird dynamic. Um, but for me, uh, I wouldn't say he was a boogeyman. I just didn't, didn't like him um, based on the information that I knew about him. So I had a series of wake up moments. Um, it wasn't just one thing that happened. It was a series of things. Um, one of the things that was significant was I started traveling a lot, started meeting people from other countries, uh, especially throughout Western Europe. 
in Southern Europe. And um, I met someone by coincidence in a bar or a pub, an English pub in Madrid. And we connected over football. And one of the, the times we were talking about politics and he said he was for Brexit. This is, um, I believe, just prior to Brexit. I might be mixing up my timeline. But I asked him, why is he for Brexit? Because I was told that Brexit was for these racist uh, British conservatives. And he said the United States would never allow an outside governing body to tell it what to do. And I'm like, well, that makes sense, because we wouldn't. We wouldn't like that. That'd be highly contentious. Um, and that was the perfect type of answer for me because I never heard that perspective before. And it was through him amongst other events that happened that I started being more open to alternative viewpoints, um, conservative theory, libertarian theory, um, hearing different concepts from different thinkers that I never really knew of before. Um, prior to him, I didn't know who Thomas Sowell was, and he introduced me to Thomas Sowell. Um, and, and going through Thomas Sowell's book was very interesting. Much of it I had already agreed with. My viewpoints on race have always pretty much been the same. You treat people like you want to be treated. Um, and of course, racism is bad. But it was more so just trying to identify uh, who are the real good people or who are the bad people, right? But um, he, he was very influential for me, opened me up. Uh, we got into this um, back and forth looking at um, or reading audiobook. I'm sorry, consuming audiobooks. Um, we were just like binging audiobooks back and forth. And there was one book which talked about Trump that I just came across. And I was listening to it. And they were talking about events that I had never heard of. And they were talking about details about events that I did hear of that I never heard these details before. So then I would look them up. And I said, that's interesting. I didn't even know about this. And uh, the most pivotal one was good people on both sides. Because at that point, it was at least a couple of years that I was told that he said there were good people on both sides referring to the protesters and the white supremacists. Hence being the example that Donald Trump is a white, white supremacist sympathizer. And so I ran with that amongst other people because we thought we were being informed. But what we weren't told is that he said something before good people on both sides, right? And that's when I looked up online the full context clip where he says, I didn't, first off, let me say, I denounce white supremacy. And he basically said he doesn't support these people. And he outwardly denounced it unequivocally. So I had never seen that before. And I mean, I've seen like CNN, MSNBC play that clip repeatedly. But that clip, that specific clip, where it leaves out the beginning. Because the beginning makes a lot more sense, right? Like, why would the President of the United States sympathize with white supremacists? Unless they want him to appear to sympathize with white supremacists. So that, that was the part, that was a major part where I said, if someone's willing to lie to you for years, right, to, to shape a narrative, to get you to believe something, and no bones about it, then these aren't trustworthy people. And so from that moment on, especially, I've looked at all media as being, I, I hear what they're saying, I'm skeptical, and then I verify. Um, and that was one of the things that pushed me away from mainstream media and more into independent media and consuming that. But at the time, I was still claiming to be a Democrat. Because I, I just wanted to hear all these different perspectives before making my 
my voice known. Um, another pivotal point was actually watching Jimmy Dore show, um, who's a, he's a progressive, but not like a, a cultural progressive, but he's anti-war, pro-free speech, and anti-woke. And those three things, I'm all for, even to this day. So I, I would watch him and he would talk about all the corruption of the Democrat Party and break things down and talk about things that I never heard about and verifiable things. But one of the things that was shocking was how basically the Democrat Party, uh, for better, there's no other real way of saying this. They basically rigged the, um, the election process, right? To basically push out Bernie Sanders. And it's not to say that I was wholly for Bernie Sanders or anything like that, but just the act of them basically all dropping out after Joe Biden won, I want to say it was North Carolina. Joe Biden looked terrible in all the debates I was actively watching. He was terrible. I was mumbling and fumbling. His in-person meets with, with uh, constituents was terrible. And then here he is. He wins North Carolina. Which, by the way, that's when he talked about reparations because North Carolina has a lot of black Americans that live there. So, of course, that's, that's the time that he brings up reparations. They never bring it up ever again. Um, but that's, that's the time that he brings it up. So, Joe Biden looks terrible. He wins North Carolina one state. The next day, almost everybody drops out except for, I want to say it was Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders. It may have been one other person. And there were a ton of people just before that. But they weren't anywhere close. Right? They were, they were far behind. But it was enough people to shut out Bernie Sanders. Like it was slick. They stayed in it just long enough to go through the other primaries. And when I saw that, I was like, this party is corrupt. This party is wholly corrupt. And it was that moment that I said, with all these things that I'm learning about the Democrat Party, I'm done. I'm no longer part of this party. I'm out. And so from that moment on, I no longer considered myself a Democrat. Now, I was still open to hearing what anybody said, but it didn't make me a Republican. And so... I wanted to hear what everybody said. So then I started consuming um, conservative media, specifically. Um, and actually, before that, I started consuming progressive media, right? Since I was on the left, let me, let me hear what progressives have to say. And I consumed progressive media, independent media, for months upon months. And that's when I started getting into Jimmy Dore. And then after that, I started consuming conservative media, listening to uh, Stephen Crowder, Ben Shapiro, um, you name it. I was listening to just about everybody. Didn't mean I agreed with everything they were saying, but I was just listening to everybody. And then I want to say that it was around that time when George Floyd happened. And of course, the pandemic was going on. And when the pandemic happened, I just saw a shift in our society. And I saw a shift to fear. I saw how fear was being weaponized against regular people. Um, I saw fear was being, being used against people I cared about. Um, and it just felt irrational to me. It didn't make any sense to me. I wanted to make sense of it, like a lot of people. And then George Floyd happened, and then all hell broke loose. Nothing made sense. Nothing made sense at all. You know, I didn't have a public profile. I didn't talk about these things publicly. Um, I kept it to myself. My exploration politically was all for me. It's how I wanted to view the world. 
I really didn't share much of my politics with anybody else. But the difference is that I had the choice, right? If I wanted to, I could go on social media and say whatever I wanted to say like everybody else, but I chose not to. But after George Floyd, if for the first time in my life, it felt like you're not allowed to, which is a different feeling. And I didn't like that feeling whatsoever. You know, choosing not to do something is one thing, but being told or being made to feel like you're not allowed to do something. You're not allowed to ask questions. You're not allowed to, to have nuance on this topic, right? You're just supposed to be angry, upset, and agree with us. And that was foreign to me. I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that narrative. So what I ended up doing was seeking out free speech forums, started talking to people. And I mainly wanted to find out, uh, am I crazy or is everybody else going crazy, right? Because it felt like America was having a panic attack and I wasn't. So am I weird that I'm not having a panic attack and everybody else is? So that's what I was trying to figure out. And it was comforting to be able to express myself um, and, and actually have people respond to what I'm saying and not have an remo- emotional response to what I'm saying, right? That's irrational. Um, so that's, that's when I got the encouragement from people to write. And I started writing. And I started writing my book, Black Victim to Black Victor. Um, and from there on, I was just trying to take what was happening in society and kind of mold it into a book put my thoughts into it surrounding race, but other deeper issues like family separation, uh, fatherlessness, and tell my personal story. Um, so for someone who didn't share his feelings publicly to, to writing the book and then trying to publicize it um, was a really big deal. But all that was part of my, my transformation. I, I went through all this internal work, this questioning myself, uh, to get to the point where I'm at today where um, I don't hate Trump. I don't love him. There's things I agree with. There's things I don't agree with, which is about a healthy viewpoint to have just about anybody, right? I think there are many things that Trump did that were good, right? And there are things that I don't agree with that he's done. And I've written about these things as well. But I don't beat a dead horse when it comes to that, you know? Um, but I, what I learned about walking away was not necessarily that it's walking away from the Democrat party to walk right over to Republicans. It was walking away to be me, right? It was walking away to join myself, not a party, not even a concept, but join my morals because many of the things that I was espousing when I was a Democrat was because I was a Democrat, right? You're you're supposed to be um, pro-choice, right? That's the the right thing to do, right? You wouldn't want a mother to not have the choice to kill her baby, would you? And, you know, putting that into practice didn't feel good, right? To tell my ex-girlfriend, whatever you want to do, I support and watch her choose to kill my child. That didn't feel very good, but I did it because I was a Democrat, right? Being a good Democrat means you give give the woman the choice. Um, And I don't even think she wanted to do that. You know, I think every woman wants her, uh, you know, child's father to be like, I'm excited, we're doing this together, let's move forward. So I partly blame myself for that as well. But, you know, just, I needed to listen to myself. I needed to be skeptical of people in power. I needed to be skeptical of narratives that go around from both sides. And I needed to walk away from a party ideology, uh, you know, arm in arm with a political party and just do as they do and say as they say, just cause, even if it makes no sense, even if it's wrong, even if it's against your morals, 
and that was that was the thing that I I came to conclusion that um, walking over to the Republicans and doing the same thing as I was a Democrat doesn't make any sense to me either. I think walking away means moving away from a political party that doesn't ultimately care about you. It only cares about compliance. And I think this is any party, right? You need everybody to have cohesion and you need to have everybody symbolically do things together and advocate for the same things together and repeat the same narratives, right? To keep the group together, right? And I just wanted to be me. And if one day I choose to support Republicans because of whatever, then I support Republicans. And the, the whole shaming tactic of uh, being a coon if you vote Republican, I really don't care about because I got to go to sleep at night and feel good about myself. It's got to be what I think is right for me, what's right for the future of the country, what I think is right for my son. And so I'm going to support whichever candidate, whichever party that I choose to. And if that person happens to be on the Republican side, on the Republican side, then I'll do it. But I'm choosing me. I walked away from a political party to choose me. And I want more people to become independently minded. We talk about individualism and the right to think for yourself. But does that mean that you have to go to another party if you walk away? I don't think so. I think you choose what you want to choose. Your choice could be sitting at home and not voting. That's also a choice. It's up to you. But it's your choice. And, and so I support walking away from the Democrat Party so they can earn your vote. Everybody should earn your vote. Nobody should uh, get your vote just because you look a certain way, you know, you got certain parts between your legs, or who you like to have sex with. They should get your vote because they're doing something that actually benefits you, that benefits the country, that makes sense. You should support candidates over party. All of these things, these are things that most Americans should do, and I think most Americans are doing, and more of them are doing, just like myself. So, as far as my, my walk away journey, Today I'm an author, I'm a writer, I write for publications like New York Post, Newsweek, Federalist, and I'm a columnist for Human Events. I'm proud to have walked away, and I'm proud to be myself. Thank you. For more great videos, download the Walkaway Social app at walkawaysocial.com. Share your testimonial and join our community.